Hello, everybody. Welcome to Profiling Evil and this video on Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein is the predator who just keeps on abusing. He died two years ago in a New York City jail cell, and yet his story continues to grab the limelight. Let's explore the most recent news on him and talk about why anybody even cares. Hey, and would you take a minute and hit the like and the subscribe button? Ring the bell so that you receive notifications on publications like this one when I push them out. I've spoken about Jeffrey Epstein in the past, and I've created videos on him and his co-conspirators, Jean-Luc Brunel and Ghislaine Maxwell. I'd encourage you to go back and, and listen to those. Watch them. They, they specifically focus on the criminal cases and the alleged grooming tactics. Today, I want to take a little different angle as I talk about Epstein's rise to fame as a socialite, a financier, a sexual predator, and explore why we just frankly keep talking about him. Epstein was a New York-based financier with high-profile ties to the world's ultra-wealthy and powerful. He was accused of sexually abusing a lot of underage girls. Epstein was finally caught and charged for soliciting a minor for prostitution in Florida in 2008. It was there that he became a registered sex offender. Now, of his 18-month prison sentence, he only served 13 months. In July of 2019, Epstein was arrested again, this time at the airport on federal charges of sex trafficking minors. While he was awaiting trial, he ended up apparently committing suicide in his jail cell on August 10th, 2019. The medical examiner concluded that his death was, in fact, suicide. But a separate investigation prompted Epstein's family to suggest that he might have been murdered. Now, there are conspirator theorists who also believe that he never died at all. He just simply cashed in on some of the, the uh, bribes that he had out there and is living his life out somewhere with everyone thinking he's dead. I'll let you decide that. But Epstein was born on January 20th, 1953 in Brooklyn, New York, to, to blue-collar parents. His father was a groundskeeper for the City Parks and Recreation Department. His mother worked as a part-time aide at a school just so they could make ends meet. Epstein was reportedly quite brilliant. He even skipped several grades in school, graduating from Lafayette High School at 16 years of age. Now, he tried college at two separate universities, but he never graduated from either one. Nonetheless, the charismatic Epstein somehow landed a teaching job at Dalton School in New York City's Upper East Side. Former students reported that he would walk the halls of the institution wearing a fur coat, gold chains, and an open shirt exposing his chest. He was never charged with illegal behavior while at the school, but a number of girls recalled how uncomfortable they felt when they were around him. What we do know is that he was fired two years later for poor performance. <laughs> Poor performance or not, Epstein did what he does best, and he connected with one of the student's parents, Alan Greenberg, the CEO of Bear Stearns. Now, Greenberg hired Epstein in 1976, and he quickly rose through the corporate ranks of the company, where he advised some of the wealthiest clients. He opened his own financial consulting firm about five years later. Biography.com reported that Epstein actually began telling friends and colleagues that he also worked as an intelligence agent, a claim that's never been verified. Now, I find it interesting, though, that he was doing a lot of overseas travel during the mid-1980s, and he worked really closely with those who dealt with other governments, specifically in finance. Epstein continued to work in finance and was associated with Tower Financial. He left it just a few years before it was implicated in a half a billion dollar Ponzi scheme. Upon leaving, he set up the J. Epstein and Company, which would later be renamed Financial Trust Company. By the early 2000s, Epstein was working in securities funding 
and investing in hedge funds and startups. He, he now was a multi-billionaire himself, and he started hanging out with the rich and the famous. People like President Bill Clinton, Bill Gates, Kevin Spacey, President Donald Trump, and Prince Andrew. It was during this time that he purchased his own little island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. He transferred all of his business holdings out there, and he set up shop on Little St. James, his 72-acre island that he purchased for about $8 million. Jeffrey Epstein had an extremely big ego, and he took his philosophy of eugenics and transhumanism and purchased a ranch near Stanley, New Mexico, where he intended to seed the human race with his DNA. You got that right. His plan was to, quote, seed the human race with his DNA. 20 lucky women would be inseminated by Epstein under the plan to get things going. Now, Epstein apparently even believed that he could be brought back to life someday if he had his head and his reproductive organs frozen. I don't know what happened after he died. With uh, he, We know he was cremated, but I don't know if only parts of him were cremated or all of him. Now, in March of 2005, things started getting ugly. At least that was the earliest we know of. A 14-year-old girl claimed that Epstein sexually assaulted her at his mansion in Palm Beach, Florida. According to a report by Kelly McLaughlin and Lauren Frias in The Insider, the victim claimed that she was taken to Epstein's house along with another female acquaintance from Royal Palm High School, where she was instructed to give Epstein a massage in exchange for money. Palm Beach Sheriff's investigators spoke with five additional alleged victims and 17 other witnesses, eventually charging Epstein with sex trafficking and conspiracy charges. It was during that time that NBC reported the investigative files alleged Epstein brought the girls to his house under the guise that they would give him massages, which police said would turn sexual. Some of the girls told police that Epstein would use sex toys on them while he got a massage. Police said that Epstein paid the girls somewhere between $200 and $1,000 for the massage. Then he offered additional money if they would go out and recruit other girls. He groomed the girls, or Ghislaine Maxwell groomed the girls, and then they turned into groomers themselves. Well, by May of 2006, police interviewed another victim and developed enough information to support another charge of sexual abuse. But the grand jury only indicted Epstein for one count of solicitation of prostitution. Facing a newly prepared 53-page indictment by the FBI, Epstein's lawyers negotiated with Alex Acosta, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Florida at the time, to allow Epstein to plead guilty to one count of solicitation of prostitution and one count of solicitation of prostitution with a minor under the age of 18. This move aggravated a lot of people who continued to challenge the plea deal that was inked without consulting the victims. Epstein was sentenced to serve 18 months in the Palm Beach County Jail. Now, I've heard many a prison inmate say that they'd much rather do time in a state penitentiary than a county jail. They complain about the lack of programs and opportunities. You know, here, Epstein negotiated a path that kept him housed in a county jail. Why? Why? Now, I think it will become clearer as we continue. Epstein only served about 75% of his sentence, 13 of the 18 months. While in jail, he was granted work release privileges that extended to almost every day of the week, seven days a week, allowing him to even go home. In essence, he was only sleeping at the jail. Now, this would become a sticky situation for the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office, who came under fire for providing Epstein with special living conditions in the jail sworn deputies for personal security at Epstein's expense, of course, and the work release. 
Epstein actually paid in a contract to Palm Beach County nearly $130,000 in reimbursed payments for those deputies to, to provide protection to him while he was out on work release. In most states, work release is granted by the judge, not, not the sheriff. The sheriff is only involved in keeping the court order of detention. Now, that said, I've never worked in a sheriff's office, and I still find it really odd that any inmate could contract with the sheriff's department for personalized armed security details. Here's the rub, according to the report that was filed last month by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. It said, quote, under state law, Florida's county sheriffs are given the sole authority over work release programs for county inmates. Let's watch this report from WPTV5. Explosive allegations against Jeffrey Epstein and the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office coming out of New York. This time, an attorney representing some of the victims says that he personally knows of several young women who were allowed to visit Jeffrey Epstein while he was on work release. That was back in 2008. These women claim they were solicited for sexual favors by Epstein while he was supposed to be monitored by PBSO deputies. Contact 5 investigator Maris Bangkok joining us live tonight with the Sheriff's Office response on this. Maris. A spokeswoman for the department tells me Epstein wasn't allowed visits from family, friends, or guests. She says there are 464 records which back this up. Now, we've been asking for those records along with a visitor log from the sheriff's office, and we're waiting on a response. But that's not the only tie between the sheriff's office and Epstein that we've uncovered today. They were between 18 and 20 years old. As he was not sitting there conducting some scientific research for the betterment of the community. Fort Lauderdale attorney Brad Edwards claims he knows more than one young woman visited Jeffrey Epstein at this downtown West Palm Beach office while he was on work release. It was a benefit afforded to the convicted sex offender while he was incarcerated from 2008 to 2009 for procuring a person under the age of 18 for prostitution by the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. They believed that they were going there for something other than a sexual purpose. And while there, surprisingly to them, the situation turned sexual. The Sheriff's Office says Epstein was carefully guarded. If he violated any conditions, his work release would have been terminated. Contact 5 got this record from the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, which shows Epstein's foundation, the Florida Science Foundation, paid PBSO nearly $130,000 while he was incarcerated. If the Florida Science Foundation sounds familiar, that's because when Epstein was granted probation, he served out his community service requirements at that own foundation. In addition, Epstein will serve 12 months of community service at his own nonprofit, the Florida Science Foundation. And it's the same foundation where Epstein worked while he was on work release. Instead, PBSO says Epstein comes here to the West Palm Beach office of his Florida Science Foundation, an arrangement enjoyed by how many other convicted sex offenders? That's been asked, and we are looking into that. PBSO faced tough questions about it in 2008. This week, we've again asked the sheriff's office for records which show the number of convicted sex offenders who were also granted work release benefits like Epstein. Now, we've also asked for a copy of the requirements necessary for work release, and we're still waiting on a response from PBSO. Well, there you go, folks. You know, in the years that followed, Epstein's attorneys remained busy as they quietly and at times publicly reached settlements in the civil lawsuits that were going up against Epstein. His victims went after him, and the lawsuits continued every year through 2019 and now beyond. In an interesting side note, uh, 11 years later, Acosta, th this was the guy who slipped that non-prosecution agreement through, was confirmed as President Donald Trump's U.S. Secretary of Labor. <laughs> you, you can't make this stuff up, folks. But as good karma usually goes, in February of 2019, U.S. District Judge Kenneth Mara in West Palm Beach, Florida, ruled that Acosta's office violated the Crime Victims' Rights Act in 2007 by not allowing the 30 identified accusers to know about this non-prosecution agreement. On July 6, 2019, Jeffrey Epstein was once again arrested. 
This time at a New Jersey airport, charging him with sex trafficking and accusing him of molesting dozens of girls. Prosecutors alleged in the indictment that Epstein paid dozens of underage girls for massages and molested them in homes in Palm Beach, in New York, and of course there are allegations in at his island. These all happened between 2002 and 2005. The Associated Press reported that prosecutors said Epstein, quote, intentionally sought out minors and knew that many of his victims were in fact under the age of 18, close quote. Epstein pleaded not guilty to sex trafficking charges on July 8th, 2019. Now, in just 30 days, August 10th, 2019, Jeffrey Epstein died by suicide in the Metropolitan Correction Center jail in New York City. Immediately, the conspiracy theories began to surface regarding whether he was a dead or alive. Some say it was all fabricated and that the wealthy predator is living somewhere else, enjoying the benefits of having bribery information on prominent people. Others argue that he was murdered. The medical examiner, though, stands by his findings that the broken neck that he examined on Jeffrey Epstein was consistent with hanging and with suicide. Now, much of the focus turned to the correction staff, who just recently, as part of a plea negotiation, admitted to falsifying records. Instead of completing the mandatory prison checks that night, those officers said they sat at their desks, browsed the internet, and moved around in a common area. Their punishment? They're going to have to do 100 hours of community service each. Well, about two weeks after Jeffrey Epstein's death, Judge Richard Berman allowed more than 20 accusers of Epstein to testify against him in a Southern District Court. This happened in New York City on August 27, 2019. The judge called it both a matter of law and a measure of respect for the victims. Kat Tenbarge of Insider reported that 16 women emotionally recounted their experiences of being allegedly sexually abused and, for some, being raped by Epstein when they were underage girls. Many said it happened over a period of months or years. An additional seven women gave testimonies that were read via statements presented by their lawyers or their legal counsel. Now, keep in mind that moments before the accuser spoke, Assistant Attorney Maureen Comey mentioned the dismissal and said the indictment against Epstein was dead. The motion was approved two days later. So if Epstein died in 2019, why on earth are we still talking about him? Well, here's the answer. A few weeks ago, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement completed its investigation into the alleged improprieties and possible wrongdoing at the Palm Beach State Prosecutor's Office and the Sheriff's Office, all of this in connection with the lenient criminal prosecution and liberal jail privileges that Epstein received. Last week, A 27-year-old woman named uh, Caroline Kaufman initiated a $500 million lawsuit against the Epstein estate, alleging that she received serious bone disease stemming from a brutal attack. She turned down a previous settlement offer. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement released three summaries of its investigation, including an examination of the state attorney's office handling of the case, a look at the allegations that Epstein sexually abused two women while he was on work release in Palm Beach, and an inquiry into whether anyone in the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office committed any crimes or received any benefit for giving Epstein special privileges while he was incarcerated. The report acknowledged the appearance that Epstein received differential treatment while in custody of Palm Beach Sheriff's Office. That said, the oversight investigation concluded that Epstein met all the criteria for work release as set by the county sheriff. What I find so disturbing is that the court and the work release guidelines allowed Epstein to leave his jail cell almost every day and allowed him to go not only to his office, but to his home for up to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. 
The report indicated that the women who claimed they were forced to have sex with Epstein while he was in jail custody refused to cooperate, so they couldn't go forward with that. In examining the claim that dozens of deputies worked off-duty shifts to provide Epstein with additional security, the sheriff's office said that it was primarily off-duty deputies who were hired. They weren't uh, being monitored, and they weren't monitoring him as an inmate. I don't quite understand that. The report revealed that Epstein's attorney did, in fact, pay that $128,136 for the private security details. 91 different deputies worked those details over that period of time. And when evaluating the special housing that was afforded Epstein during his incarceration, including staying in special management areas of the Palm Beach jail, uh, and, and then later his own private cell in the jail, sheriff's officials told the investigators that they gave Epstein his own housing because they believed he was at risk, perhaps being extorted by other inmates or perhaps in jeopardy of being injured. They said they worried that he would become harmed in the general population because the sheriff's office couldn't really identify if there were any boyfriends or associates of his victims who were incarcerated at the same time. The investigation did not uncover any other time that these kinds of special considerations were given to other inmates. Only Epstein got them. And this one really got to me. How do we ignore the fact that somehow Epstein was allowed to purchase two pair of women's size five panties from the jail commissary? And let's not forget, Epstein was also given access to a television that was installed in the special management area solely for his use. Jeffrey Epstein's estate grew by more than $85 million last year as caretakers took care of his assets while they complained that they might be going broke. His Palm Beach mansion was recently purchased for $18.5 million. The home is being torn down to make room for a new house, erasing the site where some of the sexual assaults against underage children took place. As the mansion was tumbling, former Palm Beach police chief Michael Ryder said, the former owner of this house did immeasurable damage to the lives of countless children and was able to corrupt the legal system to the point that the courts have called it a national disgrace. While it's critical that we learn from this tragedy, it's nearly as important that we follow with doing everything possible to erase any connection of Epstein from this community. Perhaps this is the first step in erasing the memory of Jeffrey Epstein, but I hope that we never forget the damage that he caused. Now, here's my question for you. What do you think will happen to Jeffrey Epstein's associates, Ghislaine Maxwell and Jean-Luc Brunel? I look forward to reading your comments down below. Hey, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon at the next crime scene. 